Hello friends and book babes. Welcome back to the channel. I've had this idea for quite a while and so I'm finally excited to start doing it and that is reading popular books from my childhood for the first time. So there's actually a lot because I wasn't much of a reader as a kid. There's books like Hunger Games, Divergent, Harry Potter, the Percy Jackson series my teacher did read to us when there was like downtime but I don't remember how far we got into it and I honestly don't remember much about the series in general but it definitely was my favorite thing <laughs> ever when I was in fifth grade and that was like the moment when I was like books they're kind of slow. In this video, I think we're going to go ahead and read the Hunger Games trilogy. They're on Kindle Unlimited, so that's how I'm going to read them. So let's get started. Listen, one thing my Kindle is going to do is humble me because I started this book and it said, oh, it'll probably take you like a little under five hours to finish this book and I was like oh my gosh awesome maybe I could read this all in one sitting like that would be so great I start reading it and it starts learning my speed tell me why it bumps up the reading time to nine and a half hours <laughs> I stay humbled by this kindle right here I'm currently on chapter five of the hunger games and um why did the movies delete madge like I know, like I hadn't, like I'm only on chapter five and she's already gone. So I don't know how prevalent she is in the books um, or if like we literally never see her again or anything like that. But I don't know. I feel like the movies, like it would have benefited having Madge there to really showcase why Katniss had this like um, attachment to the Mockingjay symbol, especially since the book actually explains like the purpose of the Mockingjay because I always remember being just being like why does she care so much about this Mockingjay <laughs> like I don't understand like what does this mean so I can definitely sense that thing. I had a lot of questions okay whenever I would watch the movies which would probably make sense you know and I'm not saying the movies have to info dump because they got they're getting me to read the books you know so maybe that was the point is to not give all the information so you'd want to read the books but I don't know at the same time it's like a lot of people don't read and this is a movie so like maybe treat it as such and like give the full story <laughs> I don't know I am definitely enjoying the book <laughs> I'm definitely enjoying the book currently um i'm ready to get in the games that's what i had to say if i've never had watched the movies i could totally see myself reading this in one day in one sitting so it's written pretty well it's written really well actually <laughs> the one she talked about eat having to eat dogs i was so disgusted but i was so like yeah this is this is your life, bro. Like, I can't... Ugh. When she talked about eating rats, I was like, oh my god, I can't do this. But this is the reality. Like, this is war. This is... Well, they're not even in the war. This is oppression. <laughs> this is poverty and oppression. Like... Ugh. Oh my god. If you've been following me for a while, then you know I avoid fan art like the plague, okay? Because I will literally wait until I finish an entire series before looking at fan art because I'm so terrified of getting spoilers of stuff, you know? But since it's the Hunger Games and I was like, I've seen the movies, like, I know all the spoilers, right? <clears throat> I go to look up some fan art. But I came across one and that gave me a spoiler for something the movies never did. It involves PETA. And that's all I'll say. Okay, that is all I'll say. It involves PETA. But I didn't know that that happened to him <laughs> because the movies didn't bring it up. <laughs> I'm on like chapter 10 and I'm already like... If I had read these books before watching these movies, I would be so disappointed. I would be so upset over what they ended up creating with the movies, you know? When District 11 gave Katniss some bread, that almost got me. That really almost got me. I wish they kept that in the movie. I don't know how they would have explained that that type of bread is 
uh, like District 11's bread. <laughs> but that really got me, honestly. We've acquired the physical copies. Hunger Games is coming in the mail. This was the worst time possible to try and get these books because of the new movie coming out. But we have acquired them. <laughs> chapter 12 now which is like I think Goodreads said I'm at 40% now and I don't know if I've said this already but my favorite of the movies is Catching Fire so I was really hyped to read the book um but I'm on chapter 12 almost halfway like we're getting close and the plot of the movie hasn't even happened yet <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm getting a little bored which is all that's like on me okay because I have I watched the movie first you know so I know like what's to come if I didn't know what was to come maybe I'd be more intrigued I guess being like annoyed that we haven't gotten to the part <laughs> where like President Snow announces what he announces you know and like I'm just very annoyed <laughs> so far I am currently team movie <laughs> with this one just because it was a little bit at least from what I remember it's a little bit more fast paced it's gonna happen I, f I have a feeling it's gonna happen in this chapter I have a feeling yeah I think I just spoiled something for myself when I was looking at the pages so I think it's finally gonna happen in on chapter 12 but I don't know bro like 12 chapters to get to that I don't know it's just it's like I'm on page 164 I feel like we should have already had the announcement at like page 100 so there's that but other than that I'm excited so I finally finished Catching Fire last night it is now time for the mocking j 390 pages so about the same as Catching Fire so we'll see how this one goes hello I'm on chapter seven currently. Ow. <laughs> um, don't mind me. It's literally 5.45 in the morning, okay? Leave me alone. I realized I never said um, what I was expecting, any thoughts or anything like that about this book. And I'm really intrigued with, like, how... Um, kind of like the pacing of this book is gonna be considering the movies split it up in a part one and a part two which is also why I was surprised it was only like less than 400 pages because they split up the the final book in Twilight and it and it looked like it made sense because I've never read Breaking Dawn but Breaking Dawn looks like a brick you know so it made sense or at least it looks like it might make sense <laughs> to do that so I am really interested in seeing how this all plays out and seeing if the movie did the right thing or not so we'll see I did always think part one was kind of boring until the end <laughs> um so we shall find out i guess dude so i'm confused <laughs> because i'm trying to remember with Mockingjay Part Two of the movie, how much what how much have I already read, and how much is left? Or I feel like there's still a lot left from the movie. And like, is this a good chunk? Sure, but it's like a hundred and thirty pages. Like, what is going on? <laughs> I'm enjoying it a lot. I was really. I was really enjoying the book, actually, and then I went on Goodreads, and the first two reviews I saw were, like, two stars, <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> and now I'm just like, what's going on? Like, 
there's so much still left and I'm just like where literally on chapter 19 there's like eight chapters left like <laughs> when is this gonna happen it does it happen or did the movie make that up like what's going on and that's the movie's fault I will say time and time again in this video or it's not even the movie's fault it's my fault for watching the movies first and then reading the books so I don't know <laughs> What is up? I have finally finished Mockingjay. I don't know why finally. I read it in like three days. <laughs> but I finally finished the series after like a good three weeks, maybe four. But, oh my gosh. So I wanted to wait until I like marinated in everything before I gave my final thoughts on everything. So let's talk about it. Um, I've been watching the movies every time I finish one of the books. And... So as someone that watched the first Hunger Games in theaters when it first came out and I was probably like 13, I enjoyed it, but I wasn't like obsessed with it or anything to the point where I didn't even watch the other movies until like a lot later on in life. <laughs> and then I finally rewatched them in like August. And that's pretty much it. Like, I never had, like, a big attachment to the series, but I did think the movies were pretty good. And then I read the books, and now when I watch the movie, I am so attached. The power of books, guys, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, the attachment that I have to the characters in the movies, even though I feel like Jennifer Lawrence, she ate down the character of Katniss but the fact that they didn't cast someone that looked like they were 16 like Jennifer was definitely looking more 20 22 like a college student pretty much everyone looked like a college student Josh Hutcherson was really the only one that could pass as like maybe a teenager like a like a younger teenager um so he gets a pass like he's the perfect pita and I'm okay with him um Liam as Gail Kind of gets a pass just because I know Katniss says in this one that when they met at her being 12 and him being 14, he basically looked like an adult, <laughs> like a full grown man at that point. So you could probably, you could pretty much get away with that one. Um, but Katniss, like I kind of lose the like the emphasis on the fact that it's children in these games because Jennifer doesn't look like a child. She looks like a young adult she looks like she's in college pretty much the issue for me mainly um and i think that's why i wasn't that attached to the movies when they came out um so i do wish that they did find someone that looked like a teenager but at the same time jennifer really ate that character down so i'm not that mad about it <laughs> and especially after reading the books and then rewatching, i was like oh my gosh ah, jennifer she she knows what she's doing the makeup sometimes was like oh she looks like a little baby doll like she actually looks pretty young now like i'm like convincing myself that she looks young in the movies now too and by young i mean teenager because she's obviously young she filmed it when she was probably like 20 i think so yeah but anyways back to the books first one i really enjoyed a lot and i was kind of getting upset over how much the movies did like got rid of like the entire emphasis on the Mockingjay like I didn't first of all I feel like such an idiot because I didn't realize until reading these books that um the bird the Mockingjay isn't a real bird <laughs> like it's a fictional bird and I feel like an idiot because of that because I really thought like a mocking like it makes it like it sounds like a real bird a Mockingjay but anyways I feel like the they never really explained the emphasis on Katniss being called the Mockingjay like why that's so significant in the movies and so I feel like I got a lot of what I was missing from watching the movies in this book so I would totally give this one like a 4.5 stars I liked pretty much everything about it yeah I didn't really have any complaints at all and then with Catching Fire I think I mentioned this this is when I started to realize that watching the movies before reading this really bit me in the butt because it was kind of ruining my reading experience of everything because 
like I was just waiting for the plot of the movie to get started in this one for into like 40 percent in and if I didn't know that what was going to happen in the movie I would have just been reading it like normal and like oh we're starting the rebellion or whatever like that's what I would thought uh that's nobody's fault but my own for watching the movies first (laughs) so I can't really blame the book on that but it does make it hard to rate it since my reading experience was that way I think objectively this book would probably have been like a four star and maybe also 4.5 um back then if I had read it before watching the movie I would still give it like a 4.5 just because of the ending really the ending was insane no I knew the ending it still had me shook up like she wrote it so well so I still would give that one 4.5 also when I got to Mockingjay, I was really interested in seeing like if I pretty much agreed with the movies for splitting it in two. And I don't know, honestly. I think because I, I remember, I haven't rewatched part one and part two yet, but I remember always thinking part one was kind of boring. So I figured I'd be bored for half of this book. But tell me why the part one movie plot in this book was like so good. To me, I loved it. I enjoyed a lot of it. I still enjoyed part two, the part two of it. I do think it kind of dragged in certain areas. And there was a lot. Like, there was a lot going on. I think she could have easily made this into two different books and added a little bit more. Because I do think the ending was a tad rushed. If I had been watching, if I had been, like, reading these during publication, like waiting each year for the next one. The ending, because of how rushed it was, I probably wouldn't have been very happy about it. (laughs) But I also was giggling and kicking my feet still. So I don't really know (laughs) about that. But I think ultimately, like she really shows the ugly war is in this book with it being less than 400 pages. And I think that's pretty insane to be able to do especially when you're used to like Sarah J Mass books. I enjoyed it immensely. I'd say I'd give it four stars just because I feel like there's certain things that could I feel like could have been flushed out a little bit more. Like I know Annie wasn't really even a side character. She was kind of like an acquaintance in the book but we know I just wish we had like even like just a sentence of Katniss saying oh yeah the head doctor is talking to Annie about this and doing this with her and so this is how she's coping and being okay and blah 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 like I just wanted to see like how she was doing you know even if it was just Katniss telling us in like a sentence or two and also Effie only showing up in like chapter 26 aka the second to last chapter just to like send Katniss off to do the do the thing (laughs) was kind of weird to me especially since in the movie she was in district 13 so I was waiting for her just for her to like barely show up I was kind of like you could have just killed her off honestly (laughs) you was pretty you was pretty murder happy in this one so I don't really understand why she didn't just you know (laughs) but ultimately I'd say four stars because of that I think it was a great ending for Katniss. But I also think if I had read these when I was, when they were popular when I was growing up, each one would probably have like five stars, most likely. I'm just reading it now. And like the movie spoiled a lot for me <laughs> during this reading experience. So that's why I'm being a little bit more picky. But I think the series overall, I would still give five stars, even though I didn't give any of the books specifically a five stars. I think the series itself deserves a five star. Something else I just remembered and wanted to add, which is why the lighting is different. I wanted to talk about, just for a brief second, about how I feel like the impact of what happens to Prim didn't hit the way I think Miss Collins wanted it to hit. Frankly, because Prim wasn't really in the books that much. Like There was probably like two or three scenes of her in each book. And so I didn't really care about her that much. And so for the impact, I would assume she was going for, I feel like they should have had more scenes of Prim and Katniss like bonding and stuff. Like I started to somewhat care about her in Mockingjay just because of 
some of the things she was telling Katniss and it looked like she was like really learning and like growing like really see her growing up and not being that same 12 year old scared girl that we saw in the beginning and so I feel like if we kept seeing more scenes with her obviously the first Hunger Games you're not going to really see her much but there was like 40 percent of Catching Fire where we could have had more scenes with her and then a lot more scenes in Mockingjay so I do have to say that if she wanted it to hit there should have been more of Prim in the actual books because in the movies and in the books, I didn't care that much about Prim, to be honest with you. The only scene that really got me was her with the cat. (laughs) Her with the cat, that's what actually got me, which maybe she just wanted us to feel it in whatever way. And if that meant we felt it with the cat instead of Prim, then so be it. I definitely see myself rereading it. So I'm very glad that I ended up getting the physical copies instead of just reading it on my Kindle. So highly recommend still. So this was a great start to the new series I'm doing of me reading popular books from my childhood for the first time. This was a great start and it's only going to go downhill whenever we get to Divergent. Tell me what series you want me to do next for this little video series I'm doing. And thank you guys so much for watching like and subscribe follow me on my socials and i will see you guys tomorrow bye